Welcome to The Professor, where I, as a photography and Photoshop uh, professor at a university in California, um, I usually just uh, tackle those subjects and have all kinds of tutorials and things and content regarding photography or Photoshop or visual media and its use um, in content creation. Um, those are generally the things I talk about. I don't do very, um, I don't do any videos. In fact, this is my very first one on um, on faculty development and um, curriculum development and tricks and tools to make our jobs as educators easier. Um, I know that most of you, like me, have been receiving emails and workshops and all kinds of stuff relating to AI and its use in education and especially higher education, right? I mean, we're worried about its use in the classrooms. We're worried about students using it instead of their brains. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I actually have incorporated um, um, AI into, into all of my curriculum um, and allow students to use it on a, a limited basis, um, not to take over their stuff or re replace their own original thought, uh, but more of as a supplement, a sounding board, a mood board, or a jumping off point, or using to help generate ideas, uh, much as what they would in like a peer group. And I, I, know I still use peer groups and stuff, but I mean, um, there, I think there is a place for AI and we're, we're just sort of trying to find it. But today I'm gonna talk a little bit about like, what we, how we can use AI as, um, as educators to sort of make our presentations um, a little more impactful and um, visually appealing to students who, as most of you know, uh, the students coming into um, higher ed right now have been, uh, were born with an iPad or a iPhone or some smartphone in their hand. And you, and they have, um, studies have shown that they, they use words and rely on words and face-to-face um, -face interactions um, less and less and rely more and more on visuals to communicate their ideas and um, uh, thoughts and like stuff to each other and messages to each other, right? I mean, the whole um, sliding into DMs, somebody's DMs on Instagram um, relates to somebody reacting to a photo or content that was placed first, and then that sparks the conversation, right? So um, these days, visuals, um, photos, memes, videos, and all that kind of content um, are a lot of times what precipitates their um, their inter social interactions, how they meet, what they joke about, uh, their dialogue, etc. Um, they start with content. So what I'm, what my goal is today um, is to introduce you a little bit and how to use some of that content and speak sort of their own their visual language, right? And this is mostly going to be for courses that that don't have um, don't have a heavy visual component to them, like the STEM courses, science, math. Um, those as a photographer and a photography professor. Um, I use visuals and have visuals readily available. And if I don't have them, I can go out and shoot them with my camera in three seconds and come back and drop it in my presentation. And I'm done. Right. Um, a lot of you guys don't have that. Um, you don't, you don't have that luxury, especially if you're like history instructors or, or, um, educators that teach them stuff like that, that don't readily have some of those images available or wish you'd had a photo of Paul Revere on his horse doing something and you just don't have it and you'd love to have something like that. Um, you know, fiction plays into this as well. First off, I'm gonna start with chat GPT, which is probably the elephant in the room. Um, most professors are worried about this and I'm gonna show you guys how I use chat BT, GPT um, as an educator, as a photography professor. And I'm gonna just show you some of the guys like some of the techniques I use to help me out, right? And a lot of this stuff is to help me and to get me to a place where I can uh, teach more and deal with some of the problems and issues I have as an educator these days, um, like with mental health and you know doing a bunch of other stuff that um, is outside of teaching, sort of. And this helps me teach and this helps me get my stuff done faster. Um, and a lot of times you guys are just sort of mundane tasks that we all have to do and but require a lot of thought to sit down and you have to do it, right? So first of all, um, I'm going to talk a little bit about ChatGTP. Um, I use this for a couple of reasons. I'm going to show you how. First of all, <coughs> um, I have the hardest time coming up with wrong answers for quizzes and assessments, like exams and stuff, right? So um, it's it's I see them as 
they all seem super wrong to me whenever I write them. Like, who would ever pick this on an exam? And so I al- I always struggle, like, how to how to design these questions quickly and and get these exams and these um, these assessments done, right? So I have a quiz a week in my Intro to Photography course, and it just sort of provides, I mean, I can use the same one over and over for sure, um, but in terms of generating the initial questions and answers, gosh, it's it's just a it's just a, a pain to me, right? So I'm going to ask ChatGP to help me out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say provide um, four incorrect answers, correct answers, and then what to the question, right? What is a camera obscura, which is a obscura and we have this um, this is on our one of our first quizzes regarding history and history of photography and we go into a camera obscura and what it's about how it's affected the design of um, of cameras today etc right so here we go let's try this I'm I, there are five questions total I have a correct one and I need four wrong ones okay so and here the right so we here are four Intentionally incorrect answers to the question, what is a camera obscura? A camera obscura is a t- type of tropical fruit found in the Amazon rainforest, known for its bioluminescent properties when ripe. Now, see, now here's the thing. You could keep these right. Um, the camera obscura refers to a se- secret society of artists and philosophers. None of these questions would make, stu- like, the right answer, you guys, would be super, super clear, right? Because none of these relate to photography. So you need to sort of like, you need to like fine tune your prompt. And we're going to go provide four incorrect answers to the question, what is a camera obscura? And then say the answers must have some relevance Rela, rel, a, rela, relevance to uh, photography, right? So now let's try this and see what happens there. Love it. Love, love, love. Okay, now this looks and sounds a lot more like what students would like answer, right? Uh, number four, in photography jargon, a camera obscures a device attached to a camera that automatically detects or removes red eye effects in portraits. See, if a, if a student missed class, did not know what a camera obscura was, um, they wouldn't know. I mean, they'd guess the smartphone app, right? Or a digital filter used in photography software that creates a distorted psychedelic effect. Yeah, right. None of those. So this is great. This is exactly what I was hoping for. So here's my four wrong answers. I plug these into, into Canvas. Um, copy and paste them into there. Done deal. And I can get like my quizzes done and out really quick, right? So now let's say I'm stumped for a lesson. I'm trying to generate a new lesson. Um, I'm, I've been struggling with shutter speed. I've gone all over. I made the mistake of going to Google and looking online to see if I could find ideas that would start. But you know what? One thing good about chat GPT and other um, language learning models is that it is it literally, whether, it, I mean, uh, legally or illegally, right, has sourced the entire internet for the information we're going to like, it's going to use. So instead of me Googling and looking for relevant examples of stuff, why don't I just try, type it into here and let it do the work for me, right? So let's say I need a, this is a shutter speed lesson. I'm, I'm run I'm, you know, running up against a wall here. I can't figure out anything for it. So how about provide a lesson and accompanying 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 activity for college level students that let's see that teaches the concept of shutter speed oopsie in photography there we go let's try this right And look what it does. I mean, it's got the assignment, review and discussion, conclusion, 
uh, practical activity, capturing motion, divide students into small groups. Now, all this, n not all this works, right? Types of motion effects, 15 minutes, factors influencing shutter speed, introduction to shutter speed. This looks really good. Um, and there might be some things I need to fine tune based on my um, what I've taught the students before and what I think they know, right? And if I need to make it a little more advanced or add it and make it to if I have more students or less students, you can totally tailor this and customize this how you want. I'm just giving you guys this as an example to see how quickly um, chat GPT and AI come up with like ideas for stuff, right? So that is one lesson and one thing. Now, what happens if I'm, I'm being tasked with making a a sports photography course, right? So I'm doing a sports photography course and oh, let's shut that off. I'm doing a sports photography course, right? And I um, need an entire 17 week curriculum, um, 17 week curriculum about photography, right? And as, as it relates to sports photography. So if I say design a 17 week, you'll be surprised. I think you're going to be shocked when you see this 17 week sports photography course. Let's see. And design 17 week cords. Let's see. 17 week sports photography. And you probably would say needed to say this 17 week. Let's do college curriculum. 17 weeks college curriculum for a course on sports photography include student ooh, learning objectives for each week. Oh my gosh, let's try it. Yeah, right. I know, isn't this nuts? Continued in the next message due to character limit. Where's my next message? Oh, oh here we go. Sorry. I've never had I've never run out of the character limit, but there we go. So now you see like how it can start to help you out, you guys, right? I mean, just little things like this, um, helping like map out and start wor working with this. Um it looks pretty good. I think I need to add, um, besides student learning objectives, I need to I need to have it add like lessons too, right? I need to put that in the thing. So I mean, basically copy this back, right? Copy this, paste this down here, and then put click them. Seventeen week college curriculum for a course on sports photography includes student learning objectives, and let's go and lessons for each student student learning objectives and lessons for each week. Now let's try that. This should get better. There we go. There's the lesson, learning objective. Looks pretty good, right? So this, you guys, is just, I mean, I just want to give you guys some help and ways in the, to maybe look at AI and see how it can help you, um, especially as it, as, as, it, um, as it relates to doing some of the menial tasks and meet like tedious type stuff that you just have to generate quiz answers or assessment questions or answers or things like that um, that really don't require an insane amount of thought, but um, you know still do. But I mean, I think this could really help out. Okay, so the next thing this is for text and like um, and generating text type work with language. The next thing I'm going to take you guys to is if you look down here, I've got a Discord um, on the Discord app. There's the a bot called mid journey and that's the one i use most um and mid journey is basically an ai content generator for like photos and graphics and logos and things like that and so what i'm going to type in is i'm going to type in some examples of things you might um come across and things you might need or photos you might you know want to use right so if i say let's say image you type in image and you go to image prompt up here and once you've got that type, you want to describe your um, describe the image you want. So let's say I'm a science teach, educator and I need a photo describing or um, illustrating photosynthesis, right? So I want a photo 
that illustrates the concept of photosynthesis. Okay, that looks pretty good, right? Well, I want it to be photorealistic. So let's put a comma and go photorealistic. And I also want it to be hyper detailed. So I'm gonna put hyper detailed because I like detail. And now I need to do these two little, there's some coding. It looks sort of like almost like basic coding, but there's some like codes involved with AI that you'll want to know and all. I might include those at a different time, but the ones you need to know are the version you're using and I'm gonna do version 5.2 and then um, different versions you guys honestly produce sort of different effects or different things. And then the last thing, uh, and this is Universal's AR, which is aspect ratio. I'm gonna make this 16 by nine, which is a horizontal aspect ratio. Um, I'm gonna put these on Google Slides and drop them in later. And so I want them horizontal, right? So I'm gonna click this and start it running. Now you'll see that everybody has access to what you do and you have access to see what they do. Here's people typing in, generate a photorealistic image of a grotesque caric caricature people with lively facial expressions using hyper-realistic, nobody cares. Whatever, people type in all kinds of stuff, right? On these kinds of things and I'm waiting for mine. Here's mine right here at the top and it says photo that illustrates the concept of photosynthesis, photorealistic, hyper-detailed. So we'll see what it generates. Right, I'm only looking for one to illustrate and drop in to make my either PowerPoint or Google Slides a little more interesting than they already are. And again, this will work great for those those disciplines that aren't super um, that aren't visually um, that aren't visually heavy, right? Not like not like photography. So here are my examples. Right, I'm going to click on this, and it looks pretty cool. And I'm going to open this in my browser down here so I can sort of see it a little better. It looks like down at the bottom left, they used a lime tree. I hate that. This looks really interesting for photosynthesis. Uh, I think I like number one, just as a um, just as a design, right? To drop some text over maybe. So um, I like that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come back to here and I'm going to up res this number one, which is here. This is one, two, three, four. They correspond to one, two, three, four here. And then you can have variations of them, right? So because I like number one, I'm gonna make some V1, some variations of one, okay? And then I'm gonna up res number one too because I think I like it, I'm gonna use it. So let's up res number one. I've got two actions going right now and we'll just wait real quick for them to come, up, come out. So it looks like here is the, the upscaled one that I just did, right? Now we can make more variations down here. We can vary a region, right? And you draw in a little area of the region you want to add something to or take something out of. You can upscale this to double the resolution of this or you can upscale it four times. You can also zoom out, which means this is gonna get really small. Um, and you can make square, you can do a bunch of items, right? And I, I suggest you guys play around with these to see what you like. Um, I'm going to click this and download this for us. So I'm going to bring it into my browser, right click. I'm going to save this as on my desktop. Cool. And I'm going to go back to here and look what it did for variations. So here are the variations of that number one that I did. And this looks pretty interesting all the way around. I like the sunlight. I like the little growth specks of things like this. I'm thinking I like number, geez, who knows? Let's do number, I like this plant. Let's do number four. So we're gonna up res number four. And we're gonna save that. So this, guys, is great. I mean, I really enjoy using this. Um, I use it for all kinds of stuff. I mean, I let's say if we can do, um, I did one before that was like this. And it was um, for like science and stuff. And I think it was, um, oh, microscopic. And I'm not sure how accurate this is. You guys will, in your own disciplines will have to like fact check some of this stuff, right? But microscopic view of a cancer cell, cancer cell. Um, and again, we want hyper detailed and hyper realistic just for fun. And then we're gonna go version 5.2 and then aspect ratio 16.9. And now I wanna see what this looks like. See if we can't get something interesting you know, out that have maybe, and again, this beats Google, this beats the heck out of Googling stuff, right? I mean, trying to find stuff that you can use um, for 
just to make your and spruce up your um, presentations, right? So here's my thing. Here's my little thing. It's 31%. It's coming up. Microscopic view of a cancer cell. Don't be distracted by this stuff. Like this guy's doing the photorealistic image of a grotesque character. This guy will not let that go. He keeps doing that over and over and over. And here we have Neil Patrick Harris pajamas comfy. Look at that. Whoa, they do a really good job of that. He looks just like that dude. And we can download this and use this if we want also, right? And as of right now, um, the current copyright ruling in legal circles is that um, copyrights can only be held by human-generated content, not robot or AI-generated content, right? So all this stuff is free, free range. Let's see, or free to use. Here's my high, here's my one I uprezzed, and I think that's sort of pretty. I'm gonna I'm gonna open that my browser. And I'm gonna save this just for fun, just because I like it. My wife likes plants. So yeah, where's our oh here's our cancer cell. So here's our hyperrealistic, photorealistic, uh, microscopic view of a cancer cell, and I don't know if any of these look right, um, but they all look beautiful. Jeez, criminy. Don't doesn't this look pretty? Gosh, man. I mean, just. I'm going to save this. I'm saving this because I think it's really beautiful. Desktop. There we go. Well, let's say we need, I mean, I don't even know. Let's try something else that I would recognize. Let's go like um, hyper, uh, hyper realistic, realistic close up image of a fruit bat. Bat. Let's try that. Nine. Photorealistic also. I can't find a fruit bat. Photorealistic close up image of a fruit bat. And this is just random, you guys. Honestly, I didn't come into this with a whole bunch of stuff that I thought. But I mean, think of social studies, think of history, think of um, images of wars and things, right? That you can't find some stuff. I use, um, I've done some stuff with historical things that were really fun. Like I did um, a couple of tintypes and daguerreotypes. And uh, Mid Journey did a great job of approximating sort of how those should look and what those should look like. Um, fantastic. So this is a hyper-realistic, photorealistic um, close-up of a fruit bat. And I should probably check and Google this and see what a fruit bat looks like. But um, we'll leave it to the zoology people out there. Here's the hyper-realistic zoomed-in close-up of a fruit bat. And... <laughs> looks, it looks pretty freaking cool. I mean, you gotta admit, right? I mean, these these images are really awesome, and to use these as visuals on a on a any kind of display um, would be fantastic, right? So, how do I use them in a display? Well, once I've got them and I've I've dropped these, let's just cancel out of Mid Journey, right, and get out of here. Let's let's close down Discord, and we're gonna go in and show you how I, I drop in these for some displays, right? And all I do is I here's my desktop. I drag these and drop these and they're done, right? And if I want to resize them, um, I resize them a little bit, you know, to just take up the whole screen if I want that to be like that. But there we go. And now if I look at this and go to demo this, this is what my presentation looks like, right? Full screen on Google Slides. Um, so yeah, all my stuff, uh, here's my photos photosynthesis image and we'll do this. And I'm sure you guys already know all this stuff. So, I mean, this is like super basic and rudimentary, but I mean, um, photo sin. Of course, the only thing I, in science I use is photo related. So I'm just I'm not sure if any of you caught that, but yeah, right. So, I mean, just like, just stuff like this, right? I mean, this helps a little bit. And you know, beginning your presentation on um, photosynth, S Y N, S photosynthesis. There we go. You know, like that, right? So here's your stuff. Start your presentation, photosynthesis, and you guys use these these images to your heart's content to help improve your um, just to help improve your your um, your stuff, right? Your presentations, make them more visually appealing. Um, I've got some other ones that I have. Uh, that I'll show you guys, and I guess I'll just drop them in here. And one was, um, I think this is Michelangelo uh, painting the Sistine Chapel was my prompt. 
And there we have him there. I thought that looked pretty cool. Not completely accurate, um, 100%, but whatever. And on here I used a, I wanted some for chemistry, unsupported image type. I think they saved it as a web page. They did. Uh, okay. Make sure, just FYI, make sure that when you do download these, I downloaded a a web uh, a web page a extension WEBP extension, and you'll need to convert that to a JPEG or a PNG to use it for presentations. I think um, you can do that in Photoshop. But if you're, I wasn't paying attention. But um, you can still. I think here's some more. Oh, I, this is the first like history, right? This is a um, realistic image of Rosa Parks at a protest in front of the White House. Uh, and you can see they did an okay job in some of the images to look like her. Uh, some of the images don't, right? And I think I have the life cycle of a cell, which is not, I don't know if this is accurate, but you'll have to see. Here is the life cycle of a cell. Um, there's a little diagram it made for me. And I don't know if this looks accurate or has anything to do with anything. But I, the, the, um, the genius, you guys, and the, the results of each prompt are best if the person that is, uh, you know, an expert in the discipline is, is making the prompt, right? I mean, if it's a photography thing, I can get my prompt very, very specific. These were really general, and I should have been more specific. However, I lack the knowledge to be that, ex that specific in, of what I want, right? Um, so... Um, it's up to you guys to like make your make your visuals um, and as industry and education leaders in a field, you'll know what to ask Midjourney and whether you use Midjourney or Dolly or um, I think uh, Google just came out with Gemini and um, there's loads and loads of, of content generators right now and I hope this has been a, a small introductory of what I just want to like whet your appetite a little bit and get you thinking about how you can use AI uh, to be, number one, a more compelling and uh, visually interesting educator, um, and then find some things that AI can do for you that don't compromise your, your teaching, right, and then the transfer of knowledge, but instead help you uh, do some of the menial tasks that we all have to do. I hope you guys have enjoyed this. If you like some of my stuff, subscribe. There'll be more uh, content about teaching and um, and using AI to help us with teaching uh, in future episodes.